O sages of good rights, in the case of widows, whether they be in childhood, youth, or old age, a rasa linga is specially recommended if they continue to perform rites. A linga of pure crystal bestows all sorts of worldly enjoyment on women. The worship of the pedestal grants all cherished desires of the worshipper in this world. A ritualist shall perform all the worship in a vessel. At the conclusion of Abhishek, ceremonial bath, the naivedya consisting of cooked rice of the shali variety shall be offered. When the worship is over, the linga shall be kept in a casket and placed separately in the house. Persons who worship their own linga shall, after the worship is over, offer as food those articles of diet to which they are accustomed. All non-ritualists shall worship the subtle linga. In place of floral offerings, they shall use sacred ashes for adoration and food. After worship, they shall keep the linga on their head forever. The ash is of three types, derived from ordinary fire, Vedic fire, and Shiva fire. The ash derived from ordinary fire shall be used for the purification of articles of mud, wood, or metals, and even for grains. Articles of worship like sesame seeds, cloth, and stale foodstuffs shall be purified with ashes. So also objects defiled by dogs, etc. The ashes shall be used with or without water, according to necessity. The ashes resulting from Vedic rites in fire shall be smeared over the forehead at the end of the rites. Since the ashes are purified by the mantras, the rite itself takes the form of the ashes. Hence, applying the ashes is tantamount to assimilating the sacred rite in one's own atma. Bilva twigs shall be burnt, repeating the atma mantra of Agra. This fire is called Shivagni. The ashes resulting therefrom are called Shivagnija, the dung of a cow preferably of Kapila cow, shall be burnt first, and then the twigs of Sami, Ashvata, Palasha, Vata, Agravada, or Bilva shall be burnt. The ash resulting therefrom is also Shivagnija, or the twigs shall be burnt in Darba fire, repeating Shiva mantra. After straining the ashes with cloth, the fire powder shall be put in a new pot. For the sake of resplendence, the ashes shall be taken. The word pasma, ash, means that which is honored and adored. Shiva formerly did so. A king takes the essence of wealth in his kingdom by way of tax. Men burn plants and take the essence thereof. The gastric fire burns different kinds of foodstuffs and nourishes the body with their essence. Similarly, the great Lord Shiva, the creator of the universe, burns the universe presided over by him and takes the essence of the same. After burning the universe, he applies the ashes over his body. Under the pretext of annihilation, he has taken the essence of the same. He assigned the essence to his own body. The essence of Akash, space, constitutes his hair. The essence of the wind principle constitutes his face. The essence of the fire principle constitutes his heart, that of the principle of water, his hips, and that of the principle of earth, his knees, thus the other limbs too. The tripundraka, three parallel lines of ash on the forehead, is the essence of the trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra. Similarly, Maheshwara has retained the essence of everything in the form of tilak, the small circular mark on the forehead. 
Bhasma means that which has controlled the essence of the whole universe. Bha means vridhi, flourishing essence. Sma means svayam, oneself. The word Shiva signifies he who controls everything and whom none can control. Shiva Vasi. Just as Singha signifies the creature who attacks other animals and whom other animals cannot attack. The word Shiva is given another interpretation. The letter Sa means permanent bliss. The letter I means Purusha, the primordial male energy. The syllable Va means Shakti, the primordial female energy. A harmonious compound of these syllables is Shiva. The devotee shall likewise make his own soul a harmonious whole and worship Shiva. Ashes must first be smeared in the dust form and then in the tripundraka form. At the time of worship, water is added to the ashes. For sanctification, the ashes are used without water. Whether it is day or night, whether a man or a woman, the devotee shall use water with the ashes and wear tripundraka at the time of adoration. He who has the tripundraka of ashes with water and performs worship derives the entire benefit of the same, no one else. Wearing the ashes with Shiva's mantra, he comes out of the limitations of the ashrams. He is called Shivarami, for he is solely devoted to Shiva. Being the devotee of Shiva and devoted to his sacred rites, he need not observe impurity occurring from death or birth in the family. The characteristic sign of a devotee of Shiva is that he has a circular dot of white ashes or mud put by himself or by his preceptor on the top of his forehead. The word guru, preceptor, signifies a person who wards off bad qualities. He removes all the ill effects of the rajasic qualities. He is Supreme Shiva himself. He is beyond the three gunas, and assuming the form of the preceptor, removes the ill effects of the gunas and makes the disciple understand Shiva. He is the preceptor of the disciples who have faith. Hence, the intelligent devotee shall know that the physical body of the preceptor is known as Guru Linga, the worship of which is service rendered to the preceptor. The word seva, service, means obedience to an order through body, mind, and speech. A disciple with a pure soul shall of necessity carry out the order of the preceptor, risking his life and staking his possessions, even if the task is not within his power. The word shishya, disciple, means a person who is worthy of being ordered about, dedicating all he has, even his body, to the preceptor, the disciple shall offer his food first to the preceptor and then take his food with his permission. Verily, a disciple, in virtue of his being subjected to discipline, is a son unto the preceptor. Moreover, by means of his tongue as penis, he discharges semen in the form of mantra in the vaginal passage of the ears and begets the mantra putra in the form of the disciple. The son shall therefore adore his preceptor as father. The physical father drowns the son in the ocean of worldly existence, but the preceptor, the giver of knowledge and the father of learning, enables him to cross that ocean. The disciple shall realize the difference between the two and worship the preceptor sincerely. The modes of worship of the preceptor are many. He can be given monetary gifts. He can be physically served, but the money shall be what is earned by the disciple. Since every limb of the preceptor is a phallus from toe to the head, massaging the feet, presenting him with sandals, bathing him, offering food and money and similar rites shall be performed to gratify him. Verily, the worship of the preceptor is worship of Shiva, the Supreme Soul. What remains after the preceptor has partaken of food shall be used by the disciple. It will purify him. 
Just as Shiva's leavings of food can be taken by the devotee of Shiva, so also the disciple can take the leavings of the preceptor. Without the permission of the preceptor, anything taken is a theft, even food and water, O Brahmanas. One shall accept as one's preceptor a person who knows many special things. Freedom from ignorance is the goal. Only an expert can achieve that. In order to fulfill a task or sacred rite, obstacles must be warded off. A rite performed without hindrances in the middle can be fruitful. The subsidiary rites shall also be performed. Hence, at the beginning of sacred rites, an intelligent man shall adore Ganesha. An intelligent man must worship all deities in order to ward off all sorts of hindrances. There are three types of hindrances. The first one, adhyatmika, is the ailment of the body, whether it is a fever or a tremor or other type of sickness. The second type of hindrance is adhibautika, extraneous one of a physical nature. The visitations of pishachas, the outcome of anthills, etc., falling of lizards and other insects, the advent of a tortoise inside the house, infesting of serpents, untimely flowering of trees, deliveries in inauspicious hours, and other things indicate some future misery. Hence, these are called adhibautika hindrances. The third type of hindrance is adhidaivika, divine calamities. When lightning strikes, smallpox, cholera, plague, typhus fever, and similar infectious diseases spread, and bad dreams, evil planets affecting the birth nakshatra or rashi occur, these hindrances are called adhidaivika. In order to ward off these hindrances, and on occasions when one touches a corpse, a chandala, or a fallen man, and goes inside without bathing, Shanti Yagna shall be performed to remove the evil effects.